Welcome, 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 welcome to the episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back with the second show. I told y'all we were going to be back with another one. Um, it is technically April 1st, so happy April Fool's Day, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Harlem Eubank got the win earlier today. Uh, we're going to break that performance down. Um, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. All forms of social media. Uh, quick hits come at you every day, twice a day. Well, twice a day today, usually once a day. Um, eight to ten minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, please also subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. That's Texas Boxing Scene um, on YouTube. All right, let's get into today's show. Um, Harlem Eubank uh, gets the W12. Um, against Miguel Antin. Antin is a guy um, who's been used now for several prospects. He's actually got a draw with Luke Evans. Um, he's been used uh, with Kane Gardner uh, a while back. He was competitive in that fight, too. Um, that was on the, the Gavin Gwynn, Craig Woodruff card, right? Um, see, I know my British boxing. Um, and he's been used a couple other times. Um, yeah, those are the ones of note. Damian Rezlinski, he lost everyone in that fight. So, I mean, he's an opponent. He's a durable guy. He's a tough guy. Uh, and, and Harlem Eubank took care of business. Um, and I want to get into that. The, you know, the pros, the cons, where, where I see Harlem Eubank going. Um, first off, the, the obvious, he's an excellent athlete. Quick reflexes, fast, nice jab. Really quick feet. Looks like his brother. <laughs> um, he's not particularly tall for the size. I think they said he's 5'8". He uh, seems to be a little more rangy. He's already 29. Um, he's 17 and 0. <clears throat> now, um, six knockouts. He, he's not a puncher. Um, but he's got some skills. Um, he, like I said, excellent, he's got excellent feet. His footwork is really good. He's in and out. His angles, he can make you miss, make you miss, make you miss. Um, he does seem physically strong, you know, for a guy that doesn't really hit hard. I, I know it seems like a paradox, but it's true. Like he, I mean, he's got some like upper body strength. But I see a little too much holding and wrestling. He should be on his feet moving. I don't want to see him inside too much. <laughs> you know, there's going to be times as he moves up, as he progresses, that he's going to have to find the inside. Uh, but I, I don't want to see the, 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 the clinging and, and wrestling. Um, I, I want to move in. I want him off the ropes. Um, his base is a little wide for my liking. Um, probably generate a little more pop if you close it up a little bit, tighten up that stance a little bit. Um, I don't like how he drops his hands, right? Like he really relies on his reflexes. He needs to be a little busier. Um I sound like I'm saying he's, you know, naming everything. Where, where to get? He's not a bad fighter. He's got a lot of things. I see talent in him. The thing is, he is 29. He's not, you know, he's not great behind the ears anymore. He's 29. He's had 17 fights. I, I think it's time to start fixing these things and capitalizing on your strengths. Like, his strength is obviously his athleticism. He has a really good jab that he doubles, triples up. Um, he, he stayed down to the body. He had hurt Anthony. He dropped him twice. Um, to hurt him to the body, hurt him to the body. And I wanted to see if he stayed down to the body. And he really, really did. Um, so he's got a, a pretty good ring IQ. You can tell here, he, you know, he, he, he knows what he's doing in there. He, obviously, he's from a fighting family. Um, you know, there was a moment in the fifth round where he landed a big hook, right, in the fifth round. I didn't have a ton on it, right, but it landed flush. And it seemed to affect Anton. You know, he just doesn't have a ton of pop, but he landed it clean. Um, and he never really seemed to step on the gas, right? Like, he, I mean, he just kind of hit him and then kind of 
moved out and on his way. He's like, follow up on that. Stop on the gas. Like, you've got his attention. Now let the hands go. Like, he can get stoppages. You know, the same way, like, Billy Joe Saunders got stoppages early in his career. Just hurt the guy with a shot like that. And then let the hands go. Right? Like, let, let him go. You're quick enough where you can dodge his punches. You've got his attention. Make the ref make the ref stop the fight. If, if you just let the hands go, you keep letting the hands go, just firing power shots, you know, and he shells up, the ref's going to have to stop the fight at some point. Um, but, you know, there's good and bad things. Like I said his speed, his reflexes. You know he's got really good reflexes. It's hard to hit him. You know he had got uh, hit uh, fourth and fifth round. Anton rallied a little bit, but really he catched him with one shot and he's flurry and flurry. But um, Eubank was making a miss, making a miss, making a miss, making a miss. Right. So I mean it kind of looked good, but if you go back and watch it, like most of those shots, not even those shots missed. So those rallies really weren't sustained rallies. Um, he was just landing, you know, he, Anthony would land a shot, kind of buzz him, catch his attention on a little bit, um, and he would stay there and, and just make you miss, right? Um, but he, he fought really well. I wanted to see him get him out. He didn't. He won a wide decision. Uh, I had it nine rounds to one. I, I think um, a couple of the judges had it closer. I didn't really see how many rounds you could really give Anton, besides like maybe one, maybe two tops. I really can't see any more than that. Um, but again, he, you know, he, 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 what you like about him is he's a jabber mover that stays to the body. He can win fights that way. He can, you know, because he, he, he can be difficult to win rounds against if you can't hit him and he can score with his jab, score with his jab, score with his jab, and just kind of keep you at bay. Um, he, he's a 140 pounder, it's a loaded division. There's a lot of good fighters in that division. You know, at the domestic level, at his level, you know, in, in the UK, um, you know, there are some names um, I, I'd like to see him fight. Um, you know, over in Ireland, Pierce O'Leary. I, I don't think he's ready for that. But, you know, um, could he fight a guy like Kane Gardner? Could he fight a guy... Like Robbie Davies, is that too much too soon? Casey Benjamin, this guy's like that. Um, you know, I, I think you know, a guy like Lewis Ritson, although Floyd, he could have some success. You know, they're the same age. Like, like, like Lewis Ritson's been around for a while now, right? But they're both 29. I know Lewis Ritson um, just got beat up by O'Hara Davies. Bad. All right, so I say three months from now. Could he come back? What about the guy? What about the guy? And it's in the domestic fight, uh, I'm just thinking out loud that um, he came back um, after the uh, after Ritson lost to uh, uh, Ponce, um, Dijon Zlatichinin. What about that guy? You know, he, he, a rugged guy, a, a adorable guy, right? Um, he got destroyed by Mikey Garcia seven years ago. You know, he took some time off. He came back. Um, he, he's a guy, right? He's 5'4". He's short. So it, it, it's, it's a matchup where um, Eubank could use his jab, use his reach, right? Use his speed to stay away from him, not really entice him, um, try to break him down. I, I think that's a fair matchup, right? Um, where's his ceiling? Like, where does... Harlem Eubank max out at. It's really hard to tell, right? Um, at 140 in the UK, in the US, you got a ton of talent. Uh, you got one of the Gary Russell brothers, you have Omar Juarez, you just have a ton of fighters. Uh, in the UK, I guess you have uh, Pierce O'Leary, um, you know, O'Hara Davies is more developed, and you have Dalton Smith, and then you have the other guy, Adam Azim. I don't see him at that level. Um, I, I think he, he could be a pretty good British level fighter who, who you know, with his name and, and with his skills, he can challenge fighters at a, at, at, at a world level, but he's going to come up short, right? Like if you put him in, you know, it's just, I'm going to pull up box track real quick. Just kind of look at kind of the, the names at 140. Um, let me look at this real quick. It, it, it's kind of, 
If they have him right at 35 on Boxer, it's probably pretty generous. Um, Richardson Hitchens, that would not be good. Richard Comey, that would not be good. Sergey Lipinets, that would not be good. Brandon Lee, Montana Love, Lindavel Delgado. Here's an inter interesting one. The Puerto Rican fighter um, that lost to Barbosa on the top rank guard. Uh, Danilita Zaria. Interesting fight, right? Um Pablo Cesar Cano is still around, right? But not too long ago. Um, late, 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 late last year. How about a guy like that? Can we can we can we test him with a guy like pa Pablo Cesar Cano? Um, who's somehow only 33 years old. Th these are interesting fights, right? Like I, I think that we can test them. Um, but I think mostly like if you put him in with Arnold Barbosa or Richardson Hitchens or Omar Warris, he's gonna get lit up. He's gonna get beat up pretty bad, right? So I would try to avoid fights like that. Um, Batra Akhmadov, so, you know, something like that. Yeah, that would be too much at this point. But those are the kind of names um, I kind of like to see him in with. At, at, at a, you know, world level. Um, the other name I came up with was uh, – and, and, and he, it's been a while. I, I don't know if he's still active. Uh, he lost to Sabarel Matias, and then he lost a decision to uh, Richardson Hitchens. It, it's Malik Hawkins. Um, that could be a fun fight, right? Um, uh, something like that. And I know he's six foot, so that could be a, t a difficult matchup. Um, but I think there are fights out that we could test Harlem Eubank and, and, and see how he adapts to a, a world class fighter. Um, or you know even the highest domestic level fighters, um, and, and and see how he does. Like I said, I don't want to sound like I, I think he's not good or he's trash or anything. There's a lot to like about Harlem Eubank. There's a lot to like about him. He's got good skills, good reflexes, good athleticism. He's got a good base, right? Uh, I just think there's a lot to learn. Like he's got to get his punches together. There's so much. You know, he's got one punch combo. You know, one punch counter, like, a counter with a right hand, which is fine. But mixed up, there's never two and three and four punches, you know, behind it. It's just counter right hand, get out of the way. Jab, 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 maybe throw in a right hand. And he will go downstairs and leave the left hook to the body. He throws the right hand to the body. Uh, he leaves himself wide open when he does that. He needs to not do that. Um, I just want to see, uh, you know, a little, a little more urgency. I want to see him throw in a little bit more combination. I want to see him a little more active. Um, and I, I want to really see him sit down and settle down on his pump. This is a guy I think Breadman, Stephen Breadman Edwards would, would do a great job with, right? Like these kind of guys who are quick and move and have skills um, and, and have things you like, but don't really commit to their power. I, I think Breadman does a, a wonderful job with him, and I think this is a guy that he can work with. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Drive, follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Uh, quick hits come at you every day, uh, 8 to 10 minutes a day. I know we went a little long today, breaking down the great Harlem U Bank, but let me know what y'all think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. It is April 1st, 2023, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.